Hi, so I think I'm going crazy because I can hear voices. It sounds like there's a radio playing. I've checked all of my devices in this room. It's really quiet, so I can't hear what it's saying. So maybe it's coming from next door, but I've never heard anything from next door. Like the walls are very well insulated. We don't hear things from our neighbors. And so I'm like, where is this coming from? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah. It is day seven of Vlognica. It is the penultimate day. You get one more video from me after this and then we can all relax, have a good new year and see each other in 2020. So this video is going to be a bit of a reflective video on my 2019 goals and also more specifically my like home stretch goals which is a video that I made a while ago about the things that I wanted to do in like the last couple months of 2019. Kind of when you're feeling like ah the year is almost over what have I achieved? I feel like I've achieved a lot actually you know just just saying. But when you're like it's almost the end of the year what do I want to get in before the new year? Oh my god, the new decade rolls around. But yeah, I kind of just wanted to take stock and see where I'm at and how I'm doing with things. Disclaimer, I am filming this at the beginning of December. So there are still a few goals which we'll talk about that I haven't completed right now, but probably by the time you're watching this, I will have. You guys can hold me accountable. So this video is coming to you in three parts. Part one is going to be the goals that I set for myself at the beginning of the year and how I did with those. Part two is going to be my mid-year goals. I made a video about that around August time, I think, when I was kind of resetting and seeing what I wanted to do for the second half of the year. I always think it's good just to set goals whenever you fancy, really. So how did I do with those? And then finally, part three, how I did slash I'm doing with my home stretch goals. Part one, my beginning of the year 2019 goals. Now these were all work related. So we had get an assistant. I did that in April. I started working with Jen. It has been brilliant. And if it wasn't for her, then all of my other goals probably wouldn't have been <laughs> completed. So I needed to do that first before we could attack the other goals. Two, launch my podcast. It came out at the end of May. It's called Doing It. It's a weekly podcast where I talk to people about sex and relationships and dating. I don't need to plug this for you. You probably heard me talking about it loads. My third goal was to start my monthly newsletter, which also did around June time, I believe was when that kicked off. And that has been going out once a month on the first of every month. And we recently launched a coloring in page, which we're calling Sexy Scribbles. So every month you get a new coloring in page with your newsletter. And if you wanna color it in and post it on social media, then use hashtag sexy scribbles so I can find them and share them. You would have seen these already in my favorites video, but just in case you didn't, here's one that I've colored in. Here's the next one that I am going to color in. And number four was my Patreon update. So my patrons are an amazing group of people who financially support me every month and we're building a community together called The Common Room. We basically did a big relaunch of like different tiers of different perks and rewards that you can get for supporting me at different levels. Created some stickers and a logo for everyone and yeah, it was great. I absolutely love my patreon if you want to find out more about that i will link it in the description okay so on to part two my mid-year goals these were like a little bit vague a lot of them were just me asking questions and like trying to figure stuff out so number one was consistency so in the first half of the year it was like launching things and starting things so in the second half of the year i wanted to be consistent at it so keeping on top of all my patron rewards, the monthly newsletter and the weekly podcast. And also questioning whether or not I wanted to break for seasons. And yes, we kind of have broken for a season, yet there are still weekly like mini-sodes coming out. I'm just not doing the interviews and season two is coming out in Jan. And so we did figure that out, <laughs> kind of. I'm really pleased with how we launched everything and like we built stuff up so that it was sustainable. And so we have been able to be consistent with everything. Number two was also a really vague one. It was like, I wanted to get off the YouTube hamster wheel, figure out some kind of business model that is sustainable and like has longevity. I don't know, again, it was vague. I feel like I've kind of done this. I don't know, 
<laughs> it's tricky and I don't know how much I can say. I'll explain it a little bit, but this also ties into my third goal from the mid-year, which was to launch a second YouTube channel. Hello, this is where we are. We're on More Hannah. We did that. We launched back in October and oh my God, I love it so much. And this is kind of what I mean by getting off the YouTube hamster wheel. It may seem counterproductive, like you wanna get off the YouTube hamster wheel so you now have two YouTube channels and you're uploading weekly on both of them and also now doing Vlognica, so that's eight videos. So getting off the YouTube hamster wheel isn't just about stopping uploading or taking a break from uploading. It is about like the mentality of it and lifting that weight off my shoulders of constantly like being like, what's the next video? What are we gonna make? How do I stay relevant? Ah. And the stress that kind of comes with that, especially when you're like watching numbers decline and separating my two kinds of content. So sex ed stuff primarily, and then like lifestyle over here, that has done wonders for my mental health in terms of how I think about my YouTube career and my channels. I feel like when I have an idea for something, I can make it and I don't have to worry about it not performing as well if I'd put it on the Hannah Witten channel. It goes here and the people who wanna watch it, watch it and I don't feel horrible when it like bombs on the main channel and then like skews my analytics. Like that was really messing with me. And so it being over here, even though like this channel is smaller, ugh, it just feels so freeing. So I'm really grateful for all of you guys who have found this channel and have come over and watched these videos because this is, this feels like my space where I can just like not care so much about the algorithm. So that feels great. And then in terms of the sustainable business model, obviously I have these two channels now, which helps. This channel doesn't earn a lot of money yet because it's not getting like as many views, but it is more brand friendly. So every video on this channel is monetized. We did it guys, we did it. Not unlike the other channel. Although I say that now, maybe my favorites video with all of the vagina museum stuff in it is demonetized, but I don't know that right now but we'll see. But also, and I don't really know how much I can say about this, from January for six months, I am part of a business accelerator. So I applied to do this like female entrepreneurship, like women in tech business accelerator thing where it's like a free program and they give you lots of business advice and support. And I recently found out that I got in. So that's really exciting. So I feel like with the sustainable business model and like figuring out like how I want to expand it and how I want to kind of like, you know, grow my media empire. I think that will be really helpful. And I don't know how much I can say about it or how much I want to say about it, but I may or may not be taking you along the journey for that and keeping you updated on things. My fourth mid-year goal was to get some relationships and sex education training. And I did this, I did a four day course, I did a whole video about it and I haven't received my accreditation yet but it should be coming soon fingers crossed hopefully and that's just kind of like the first step that I've made I want to get some more safeguarding training and some other bits and bobs I still don't know if I want to go into schools or if I have time to go into schools but for me it's just still important to do this kind of learning because I feel like it will help the videos that I make on the Hannah Witten channel as well, even if I don't actually use them like in in-person workshops and stuff. But I want the skills. I want to like understand how that all works. And then my fifth mid-year goal was another really vague one. I basically said that I wanted to be able to figure out how to do my two passions at the same time. One, sex ed, and the other is like creative, social media strategy, spreadsheets, like this industry that I'm in, like I love it, love it so much. I have kind of figured this out, which leads me on to my home stretch goals, which I made, I think in October. And one of those home stretch goals was creating an event for creators to go to. So online content creators, people who do this professionally to come together for an event. Um, there were speakers and uh, round table discussions and people can like learn from each other and stuff. And my home stretch goal was to put on one event before the end of the year and I did it. And uh, I was so nervous beforehand, but I'm so relieved and I'm really excited to like get feedback from it and then see how we can continue and do better and everything in the new year and do more of those. I just love helping creators. I love talking about this industry that I'm in. I just find it fascinating. The event is called Creator Table Talks and I'll 
leave a link in the description to it. We have a website. The website will still have all of the info as if like the first event is about to happen. We haven't updated it yet, but we have a newsletter. So if you are a professional creator and you want to find out more about that event, then sign up because that's where we will like distribute the news. So my second home stretch goal was read eight books from my bookshelf. So I did a big clear out of my bookshelf. You may have seen the video on that. And then I picked eight books that I already owned that were unread that I wanted to read. And these were the eight books and I have read these ones. So I've read four and I have four left. However, I also have a whole month left because I'm filming this at the beginning of December. So I'm actually currently reading these two at the same time because I like to have a non-fiction and a fiction on the go because it depends what kind of mood I'm in. Also, this is massive. So traveling around with it is really difficult and uh, making lots of notes. So I'm like this far through A Curious History of Sex, but I am interviewing Kate Lister for season two of the podcast. So this will be read before I interview her. Also, the notes and the bibliography and everything starts here. So all of that there is references. So actually, I am maybe like halfway through and then I'm over halfway through this one and this is gonna be a really quick read. And then what I have left to read is Giovanni's Room and Lowborn. And this is quite short fiction one and this is like medium-ish non-fiction. So I think I can do it. I believe in me. But then also I listened to The Testaments. So that's another book that I got in there, but um, I listened to it um, on Audible and I did say that I would pick eight from my shelf and read eight from my shelf. So that's like a bonus book. My third home stretch goal was do Vlognica, but get everything pre-filmed and edited and done by the 20th of December. I am on track to doing that and it's gonna get done. And by the time you're seeing this, it's done. We did it. I genuinely have been loving like organizing, getting this done like so early. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. Like just scheduling all of my filming days in and making sure the team, my editor and assistant Jen like know what they're doing and so everyone is like playing their part and like all of the cogs are turning. It's wonderful. My fourth home stretch goal was to finish season one of my podcast Doing It, which I already talked about. Yes, tick, tick, tick. Currently recording a bunch of episodes for season two, which is launching in January. So I haven't really taken a break from the podcast because I'm still recording, but it feels like a break. I don't know. And then my fifth goal, this is the one that we still don't know if it's gonna happen, but we're planning on it happening, is fucking relax, Hannah. That's what I like had written in my goals. But I'm planning on relaxing. I have to like schedule in my relaxation. But basically, because I'm pre-filming all of this Vlognica content, the plan is that I'm going to get a month off filming. Because I'm also pre-filming the first videos for the first week of January. So I'm gonna get an entire month off filming. I'll still be recording some podcast episodes, still doing like, odd bits of work here and there. But I will be finished working on Friday the 20th. That is my last official day in the office. But those two weeks prior, so week starting the 9th and week starting the 16th, I have very little to do. So it's gonna be like bits of work here and there, but like a cinema trip in the afternoon and like reading some books. So I'm very excited to relax. Oh, I'm gonna have some lions. It's gonna be great gonna be so great because normally I'm like at a hundred percent capacity and so I just I'm taking it down to like 30 percent capacity for those two weeks and then we're like at zero <laughs> over Christmas so that's great oh no not zero maybe like five percent because I still need to like promote all of these vlog videos ugh what a chore no all right so there we have it that's how I did on my 2019 goals all of my different sets of goals because I don't know I, I don't believe in like setting your goals and resolutions at the beginning of the year and then them being the same things that are important to you. By the end of the year, like, you don't know what's gonna happen. Literally anything could happen. Opportunities arise. Sometimes sickness happens. Sometimes you just don't care about that thing anymore. That's how I did. I would love to know if you set any goals in 2019, how you did in your home stretch goals, um, if you made any of those. And please like this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you for the final video of Vlognica.
tomorrow. Did you hear my tummy rumbling? I'm very hungry. Maybe the voices are coming from inside my stomach. Okay, bye. <laughs>